Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Dungeon Drop, which is a cube dropping, flicking, gathering game of dungeon crawling, really. And this is on Kickstarter right now. If you'd like to go over to the campaign page that's linked in the description, it'll show you all of the final stuff. This is a prototype, but it's here to give you an idea of what the final thing is like. Uh, as always, I recommend you turn on Klingon subtitles. If I've made any mistakes, they will hopefully be on there to correct me. And finally, these videos are genuinely only possible because of the support of the viewers. The main way I do that is through a Patreon page. It's linked in the description and in the corner right now. And if you're able to, I'd love it if you could help out to keep these videos coming. Anyway, Dungeon Drop. We are characters in a dungeon crawl. Basically, this is the dungeon, this uh, this big sprawling arrangement of cubes here. Marty is the Hawkman Mage, and I am the Dwarf Rogue. Marty will be going first. We have our initiatives here next to our race, which tells us who's going to go first. Marty had the lower initiative. He is first. Now, how we get this starting setup is the game comes with a load of large and small cubes. There's no difference between the size of the cubes. It's the colors that make a difference. We put all of the small ones in there and this big red one, the dragon. Put all of those in there and then we hold it up above the table and drop it all down and this is the arrangement that we got. Not at all doctored so it would fit in the frame. Uh, in this game, on our turn, we are going to explore. We're going to draw some more cubes out of here, drop them in there. Then we are going to use a feat. We have a race or a class ability. You get to use one of them. And then we're going to loot. You form a room and then collect the cubes in that room. A room is made by choosing three pillars and making a room out of it. And here is where we get to use a fancy pointing device. So just for argument's sake, let's say I wanted to use these three pillars to form a room here. You basically trace an imaginary line, and I have a real line that I can show you. You trace an imaginary line between these cubes that you selected and every cube that's in there. You can probably imagine it, really. But uh, yeah, it's sometimes like I would have thought that blue cube was in, but it's very, very clearly not in that room. So here I would get to collect this pink gem and this gold piece. And we can see from our player aids here that the gold would be worth a point at the end. The purple is variable. We each have quests that tell us how much the gems are worth to us and gives a special scoring thing. So gold is worth double for Marty. And for me, if I'm at three plus health, I start the game with five, I get six points. So I don't necessarily want to run into too many enemies that are going to make me lose health. So let's get started. It's Marty's turn first. He needs to explore. In a two-player game, you need to explore, which is basically draw and drop cubes. You need to do six of them in a two-player game. And it recommends you might want to do two groups of three. It's a bit easier than dropping a huge handful of them. So I've got all sorts of various barriers around the table to try and keep these in here. Let's see how effective they are at doing it. So you, you go about a foot and a half above the table. I'm not quite that high because I don't want as much bouncing. But then you drop and see where they end up. Normally, if one comes off the table like that, you put it back in the box and draw it again. But let's let's have them all out for this example game. Then we want three more. There we go. So that's added some more things to it. It's knocked some things around and given us a bit of a different configuration. So we've explored. Now Marty needs to use a feat. Now, as a Hawkman, he has flight. He can form a room using four pillars instead of three. Or... He can have illusion, explore a cube, which basically means draw a cube from the box. Then return it to the box. You may count a cube of this color as a pillar. So he can either use four grays as a pillar or he can get the option to use one of these other things, maybe even an enemy as a pillar. So I think Marty is going to use a room with four pillars, as I think what he's going to do. And so one, one of the rules of making a room is you can't intersect other gray cubes so you can't just say okay then i'm just going to take the gray cubes on the outside of the board and make a room with all of it no the room can't contain another pillar so you're restricted in that way and it can't contain for example the dragon the dragon would do 10 damage to you so it would kill anybody unless they've got some armor first so marty's very interested in gold if he used his hawkman thing so he's got a room with four pillars what if he went like over here so these two pillars, he'd collect that gold. If it intersects it, you collect it. And uh, then he could go there, then to this one, and then back to that one. That gets him, is that, that gold's just outside. That would get him the two gold 
and the blue. Blue's worth two to him, so that would be two, four, six points. I think that's a nice little start. So grab these, and he's got the two golds yeah, and right. the blue now. We'll put those down here for his, uh, his collection. And that's his turn. My turn now. I, as a dwarf, can count a gold as a pillar. And I have Shadow Find as a rogue, which means I can collect a cube outside the dungeon boundary. Now, outside the dungeon boundary means basically a cube that can't normally be collected. And we've actually ended up with quite a few of those in this game. This whole area over here isn't... You know, there's no grey cube over here, so these are all outside the dungeon boundary. This purple cube, is this even on camera? No, it is now. It's still outside the dungeon boundary. There is, yeah, there's just... I think this got flicked off from over there, didn't it? Uh, so yeah, I, I can either use a gold to be a bit more flexible in how I create rooms, or I can grab an extra cube that normally no one would be able to get. First though, I need to explore. I need to draw three cubes out of the box. There are some dice as well. Dice are treasure chests. And then let's drop them. Of course, they come straight over here. Let's have them on camera, please. And then... Drop these three. Yeah, I'm messing with things a little bit so that things stay on camera for everyone. And so there's some armor. But then you could kill the dragon if you got the armor. So, I could do shadow find and collect that armor. That's interesting. Because the dragon is six points. The dragon is a nice blocker though, and you, know, you have to kind of work around the dragon since you don't want to form a room with the dragon inside it. I think, and I, I kind of feel a bit bad for uh, excluding Marty now, what about this crazy room that's been made? We go here, here, and here. That is loads of cubes. Yeah, I should have spotted that for Marty, really. Yeah, there's there's no reason you wouldn't do that. So I'm going to collect something outside the dungeon boundary, but I'm going to collect all of these cubes. And then, yes, from outside the dungeon boundary, I'm going to get this armor. So then we look at the turn order at the end of the round. Everyone's had a go. Look at the turn order. The person with the fewest cubes, the lowest weight, is going to get to go first. So Marty will go first again which means he needs to explore, draw three things from the box and drop them in. And three more things, although some pillars have come in now, so a lot of that's entered the dungeon boundary now. I don't know why I shook them. <laughs> we have a gold going rogue. There it is. Camera. And let's just push these in a little bit. They're just off camera. They're outside the dungeon boundary for now anyway, though. Which is a shame because Marty really wants uh, golds, doesn't he? So look at this collection of golds that's emerged, though. Unfortunately, I think the only way of making a room out of it is would include the dragon. Would it? Like, he could make this room over here. Yeah, that goes right over the dragon. Look at those, all those golds. Yeah, there's no other. He could do. He could do this. That would include two of them, but it would also include two goblins. Now, if you collect the goblins, they just go over your health points, so Marty would lose two health for collecting two goblins. I think, what if he uses, he uses his illusion and explores a cube? So, randomly out of the box, he explores a treasure chest, a die. So he can use a treasure chest as a pillar instead of a, a normal grey pillar cube. So I'm kind of thinking, yeah, there doesn't include the dragon. There and there, he collects a goblin, but also three golds and a key to a chest and a white gem. So yeah, I think that's what he's going to go for. He's going to form this room here, thanks to his power that let him use a treasure chest as a pillar. So he's going to grab this stuff. Now remember, gold scores double, so this is all a lot of points for him. Now the keys are basically, you need a key and a treasure chest. And then you roll the treasure chest at the end of the game to see how many points it's been worth. But yeah, the key on its own isn't worth anything. So that's a good turn for Marty, I think. Over to me. I need to explore. And... So here's three. A bit higher than that. And then 
Another three. Oh, they, they stayed relatively on screen. Apart from this purple, that can get uh, pushed in a little bit so you can see it. Okay then, so I can counter gold as a pillar or get something from outside the boundary and I don't want to lose too much health. I can include the dragon though in my calculations because, yeah, I've got the armor. That's six points. Because I'm thinking, what about making this room here one, two, three? I would just get the dragon and two treasure chests. I do have one key. Oh no, what about this? Okay, so that I don't think quite includes that gold, but it includes a treasure chest, the dragon, and one gold. That could be good. Or if I use my... I can counter gold as a pillar. So I could say, you know, go down here. This gold in the corner can be my pillar. I would get the gold in the middle of the line there. And I would, then I would get the two treasure chests and the dragon. So I think I'm going to do that. So yeah, I'm not collecting one from outside the boundary. I am just counting a gold as a pillar. And so I'm counting this gold as a pillar, which means I'm collecting everything inside it. I am defeating the dragon thanks to my armor that I'm now going to have to give up. That prevents, uh, ignores HP loss from one monster. And that monster was the dragon. So that is out of the game now. But I collected some nice stuff. I am on the lookout for one more key now, though. It's Marty's turn again. And he needs three cubes then. We've got this great big gap in the middle now. Let's hope that fills up a bit. Nope, they'll run off to the side. And then three more. Okay then. Loads of pillars in close proximity here. That's a bit of a shame. So, Marty's incentive is gold or purple cubes. We've got some purple cubes here. Got, uh, oh, they're just on the screen, aren't they? So, let's see. The room's here. He can use four uh, pillars to make a room. I think it's worth using his illusion again and seeing if we can use something else out of here as a pillar instead. So... A blue gem Marty could use as a pillar instead of just a grey. Which is good because, you know, there's a there's this blue cube out, out of the boundary here normally. So what, what would he get there? He would get the two white gems and a gold. But then he would probably have to use that as the other pillar. Because anything else would include that pillar, which you're not allowed to do. Oh, Marty's goblin he collected should be over one of his HP, shouldn't it? We have ended up with a treasure chest off the table, actually. Maybe this will give Marty some options. Nope, <laughs> he's gone outside the dungeon. So, what should he do? Maybe this room up here is going to be a good choice. Yeah, two white gems. Although the white gems are worth the least to him. They're only worth one point each. Can't really get any purples, I don't think. This would just get him one blue. That's not very good. Yeah, collecting blues isn't looking good. What about using these two as pillars, and then this one, that would get him a blue and two golds, wouldn't it? Yeah, let's do that. So unfortunately his power is a bit of a waste because he didn't draw out a really beneficial colour, but he can get these. Now I am just doing it in turn order actually, I think Marty's still got less. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yes. Marty had less, so he should have gone first, but that's, that's a bit of a poor last turn, isn't it? There are only three rounds in this game, by the way. Uh, so, my final turn, I need to drop six things in and see what we end up with. So, I'm on the lookout for a key, aren't I? I think a good move, I could use a gold, say this gold on the edge here, as a pillar with my ability, make this a room, one HP loss wouldn't really affect me. The extra treasure chest, let's say that's not in. Mind you, if I'm using his gold as a pillar, I can't use my shadow find and grab a key from the outside, which is the other part of that plan. So, yeah, I can't do both. So what about this down here? If we use these two pillars, I can get myself this key. And then it's getting me a, a clear cube and a gold. Also a goblin, but one HP loss isn't too bad. Is the other goblin in it? I don't think the other goblin's in it. See, the red line's over the key. It doesn't make a difference either way. I'd have okay HP. So I'm going to collect... Uh, oh, this would be a goblin, though. So it would be two goblins. 
So that's okay. Because I want three or more HP to score six points with at the end. I've got my extra key now. So I, I can collect something from outside the boundary. And so the best thing for me is probably a clear cube. That's three points. Yeah. So now we can work out our final scores. So Marty, <laughs> I don't feel like he's done very well. Unless I roll terribly for the treasure chest, which is a possibility, isn't it? So Marty has... Your goal is double, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, they're worth 2 each, 19, and a key. Yeah, he should have got a chest. Well, he should have uh, just done better in general, shouldn't he? And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 18... 24 because the dragon is worth six and then we've got two keys so we can roll the treasure chests 32 so yeah 32 to 19 so yeah i feel like i made some very poor decisions for marty but the dwarf rogue came out as the best dungeoneer this time on dungeon drop and that is it it's a very quick kind of instant setup game but that's all first impression stuff isn't it you can if you want to know more about what i think then you can click the link on the screen here if you want to see another playthrough there's one link somewhere there remember patreon's great but i probably only said that about 10 minutes ago this is a short video uh yeah there's hundreds of playthroughs on here subscribe and stuff if you want to see more i love you bye